Good morning. Um, my name is Jacqueline Gupta, and I welcome you this morning. Um, it is joyous indeed to see all of your faces. I hope you um, enjoyed the summer so far, and um, so glad to have you here. Today is September the 11th, 2022, and uh, it's a bit of a cloudy day, but no complaints, no snow, not much rain, and uh, God is great. So today we welcome you to the Sacrament of Holy Communion, and uh, we'll have more details later. Alan will guide you as how to come up the center aisle and go depart from the side aisle. And um, we welcome Reverend Kathy Brownlee once again to lead us in today's worship service. And as always, we uh, thank um, Alan for doing all the needful every Sunday day, year after year in the last few years. And also we welcome uh, Pianist Kevin, good morning. And we welcome all the people who are still coming in too. So I will hand over the time to Dr. to Reverend Kathy Bromley for now. Thank you. Good morning. This morning we begin our service by remembering her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who passed away peacefully on Thursday, Thursday, September the 8th. I invite you to stand for the moment of silent remembrance, and then I will offer a prayer that has come from the Presbyterian Church in Canada National Office to be used in Presbyterian churches across the country. So I invite you to stand for the moment of silent remembrance and for the prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, before you all generations rise up and fall away, and in your name you provide leaders to serve and guide us with wisdom and dedication. We give thanks for the life Christian witness and service of Queen Elizabeth II, whose earthly life is now ended and who has entered into the joy and peace you have prepared through Jesus Christ. We pray for her family and especially for King Charles III, who will take up her duties and responsibilities. Send your Holy Spirit to comfort and give peace to all who mourn her passing. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The moderator of the General Assembly, Reverend Robert Ferris, will be sending a letter of condolences to the royal family on the death of their 
mother, grandmother, and great grandmother. Our call to worship this morning is a responsive call to worship. It comes from Living Faith, uh, chapter 7.3.1 and 2. I invite you to respond as I offer the leader's part. The church lives to praise God. We have no higher calling, calling than, than to offer the worship, worship that belongs to God, God day, day by day. day. Sunday by Sunday. In praise, prayer, teaching, and fellowship, God sustains the life of the church. Blessing and honor and power and glory be to our God forever and ever. We begin our service with singing the praise hymn. Praise to the Lord with the sound of trumpet. It's number 466 in, in the Blue Book of Praise, and it's up on the screen. seated. Let us pray. Mighty God, come among us as we gather to begin again a fresh season of learning and growing in our faith. 
We come to reconnect. We come to see the face of God in the face of others. God of grace, speak to us today in our worship to challenge us and to challenge too the lives that we lead. Grant us a moment of insight, a moment of grace, a moment of wisdom that we may return to our daily routine, strengthened in the spirit, renewed in compassion, and ready to do your will. God, hear our prayers for forgiveness. God of compassion, whose mercy endures forever, we confess that too often we have failed to give and receive love, to care for others as we care for ourselves, to pardon and to accept pardon. Hear us, O oh God, as in the silence we make our confession to you. Forgive us, O oh God, and renew us in your love for Jesus' sake. Amen. Mm -hmm. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never overcome it. Here is good news. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Let us share the peace with one another. I invite you to share with one another by waving to one another as we share the peace. And I will wave to you in turn. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Good morning to St. Andrew's youth. And I Pray that you're getting settled into your classes. Some of you have been back to class for two weeks, uh, some just for uh, this, this past week. So I pray that you are getting settled into your classes. As you know, her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II died on Thursday. I know that she is the only monarch that you would have known during your life. And she is the only monarch that I have known during my life. And this morning, we're going, I'm going to invite you to offer a prayer with me to say the words after me as we give, we remember and give thanks for her life, her faith, and her service. Let us all pray together, saying the words after me. Loving God. Loving God. We give thanks for Queen Elizabeth. We give thanks for Queen Elizabeth. Her life. Her life. Her strong faith. Her strong faith. And her service. And her service. Comfort her family. Comfort her family. At this sad time. At this sad time. 
In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now uh, welcome Michelle up to read scripture for us. Good morning. Good to see everyone. Let us pray. Loving God, attend to us as we open your word. May our hearts and spirit listen for your will for us today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's reading comes from Galatians um, chapter 5, verses 22 to 25. But the fruit, fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This, the Greek word for flesh, against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus as crucify the flesh with his passion and desire. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking or envying each other. The next reading comes from Matthew 10, um, chapter, verse 5 to 11. After Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the town of Galilee. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you hear and see, the blind receive sight, the lack, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. And, uh, 40 to 42. and the next um, reading comes from 40 to 42. Anyone who proclaim you welcome me, and anyone who welcome me, welcome the one. Anyone sent to me, whomever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whomever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, Truly, I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you for uh, reading the readings from Galatians and from the gospel according to St. Matthew. Let us pray. Loving God, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are revealed to us 
in your words help us to understand and to rise up and obey through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As we take things up again, as we begin a new season of learning and growing in our faith, I thought we should spend a little time reflecting on the meaning of hospitality. The word hospitality is defined in the Oxford Dictionary as friendly and generous behavior toward guests or being pleased to welcome visitors. Hospitality is something that we hear much about in the New Testament. The apostles, Paul, Peter, and John all mention the important part that hospitality plays. The important part that hospitality plays as one of the hallmarks of being a follower of Jesus. Although we don't hear hospitality or being a good host or hostess mentioned in the detailed lists of the fruit of the Spirit that the Apostle Paul gives to us in the letter to the Galatians, we're aware that there are fruit of the Spirit, fruit of the Spirit are indeed contained in hospitality. In fact, all of these spiritual fruits, kindness, goodness, generosity, love, joy, gentleness, are ingredients in the recipe for hospitality. Customs of hospitality, as we know, vary widely from one culture to another and even within the same culture. They also vary from one generation to the next. How the Bedouin out in the desert host a guest would be quite different from how the governor general entertains guests at Rideau Hall in Ottawa. And how we entertain guests is different from the way in which our grandparents would have entertained guests. Then the usual practice, the customary practice when guests came would be for the tea trolley, all the good china cups and saucers and the silver tea service to be brought out and used. Customs vary. Customs and the details of hospitality vary from one culture to another and also from one generation to the next. But there is a constant and the constant is that a host or hostess would provide some refreshment to the guests. A host or hostess would provide something to eat and something to drink. This goes across cultures and across generations from one 
generation to the next. In our gospel reading this morning from Matthew's gospel, hospitality plays a large role in the way that Jesus speaks about the task of being one of his followers. Jesus speaks about his followers about, and he's speaking not so much about hospitality that his disciples provide to others, but he's speaking about the hospitality that his disciples receive from other people. Surprisingly, when Jesus sends his disciples out on their first mission, he tells them, he instructs them to take only a few supplies with them. Therefore, they must be dependent on the kindness of strangers as they travel from one village and town to another. They have to depend on the kindness of strangers. Jesus put his disciples at the mercy of those they encountered as they traveled from place to place, sharing the gospel message. In the concluding verses of our reading from Matthew's gospel, we hear Jesus state, he who receives you receives me. When Jesus said these words, he was using words that were commonly used by the rabbis and teachers of his day. What he's saying here is that people, people in Jesus' time believed that when they received an, a person's envoy or messenger, that they received the person himself. And to pay respect to an ambassador was in fact to pay respect to the king who had sent that ambassador. So the same applies when others receive us. Jesus should be present in us. When we encounter others, they should see the living Christ in us. So often when we read the final verses of Matthew chapter 10, we think of ourselves when we hear the words about handing out cups of cold water, we picture ourselves as being the water givers. However, what Jesus actually means by this is it's not only when we serve others that we serve Jesus, but it's also when others serve us, they serve Jesus because they're supposed to see Jesus in us. Hospitality is something that we hear much about in the New Testament. The closing verses of Matthew chapter 10 about cups of cold water given in Jesus' name. These closing verses are meant to leave us asking ourselves, when we serve others, do we see that we're serving Jesus? 
when others serve us, do they see the living Christ in us? The New Testament has much to say about hospitality, about being a good host, hostess, about welcoming others. Let us pray. Lord God, help us to welcome and serve others in Jesus' name. May those who offer cups of cold water to us serve Jesus because they see Jesus in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We come to the Lord's table this morning. Jesus is the host at the table. We are his guests. Hear the invitation. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread, blessed, broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites all those who believe to feast at his table. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Our communion hymn this morning is number 543 in the Blue Book of Praise, and we're singing verses 1, 2, and 3 of this hymn. Confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's found at number 
539 in the Book of Praise and is up on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life. Everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Beloved in the Lord, attend to the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ as they are given to us by the Apostle Paul. I receive from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, Jesus took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As the Lord Jesus Christ took these elements of bread and of wine to be set apart from all common uses to this holy use and mystery, we come as Jesus came with our prayers of thanksgiving. We present our prayers of thanksgiving to God. I invite you to join with me in the great prayer of thanksgiving. The responses are written for you on the screen. Let us pray the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise. You commanded the light to shine out of darkness. You divided the sea and dry land. You created the vast universe and called it good. You made us in your image to live in love and harmony. You set forth your purpose in commandments through Moses and called for justice in the cry of the prophets. Through long generations, you have cared for your people. Therefore, we proclaim to the glory of your name, and we lift up our hearts in joyful praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, 
God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Precious God, you created us and called us by your Holy Spirit to become one in Christ Jesus through baptism and faith. Let your spirit be upon us and be upon this bread and this wine, that the bread which we break may be to us a communion of the body of Christ, and the cup of blessing which we bless may be a communion of the blood of Christ. Therefore, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we take this bread and this cup and give you praise and thanksgiving as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine. Come, Holy Spirit, and through the sharing of this meal, nourish, revive, and renew us. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor be yours, almighty God, forever and ever. And Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will, will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive, forgive us, us our sins, as, as we forgive, forgive those that sin against us. And lead, lead us not, not into temptation, but deliver us, us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I will be setting apart the bread and the wine one after the other today, so that as you come forward, you will receive both the bread and the wine. Just let me uh, put it, pause for a second. Kathy. According to the Holy Institution, command and example of our Lord Jesus Christ, and for a memorial of him, we do this, who on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had blessed it and given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, Jesus took the cup. This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The body of Christ broken for you the blood of Christ shed for you, the gifts of God 
for the people of God. the body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Let us pray. Almighty God, Today we mourn the loss of Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. We give thanks for her long and historic reign. We remember and give thanks for Queen Elizabeth's devotion to the service of her country and our country and as head of the Commonwealth and defender of the faith. We remember and give thanks for her unwavering commitment to duty. We pray for her children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren as they grieve the loss of a beloved mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. May they know your comfort and peace in their deep sorrow and loss. We remember in our prayers today the people of Ukraine who are suffering and sorrowing as a result of acts of war and brutality. Continue to give them courage and strength. We remember the people of Pakistan who deal with the devastation from massive flooding. Be with those who have lost loved ones. Support those who have lost homes and places of work. We pray for families who have lost loved ones in the deadly attacks in Saskatchewan. We ask for healing for the 18 people who were injured in those attacks. We remember all students as they settle into a new school year, 
give them wisdom and understanding, help them to appreciate the opportunity for learning. We remember those who are ill at home or in the hospital. We pray that you would place your healing hand upon them and restore them. Merciful God, as we mark another anniversary of the terrorist attack on the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001, deliver us from the forces of darkness and evil. Loving God, teach us to be there for one another. Help us to show kindness, humility, and grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Our hymn is number 376 in the Blue Book of Praise. Lord, the light of your love is shining. Uh, if you know the actions to the hymn, then please uh, do the clapping at the appropriate times. We'll stand as we sing this hymn.
grace and mercy send forth your word, Lord, and let them be light. You may be seated. Freely we have received, freely let us give. Our offerings will be presented. Uh, donations can be paid online through our partnership with CanadaHelps.org. Go to www.CanadaHelps.org slash en slash dn slash 56495. More donations can be mailed or delivered to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, 9860 Keel Street, Bonn, Ontario, L6A, 3Y4. So I think, uh, yep, Blossom is going to bring forward. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask your blessing upon these gifts. May these gifts go where we cannot go and do what we cannot do. Through these gifts, may the good news be shared through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So let me, uh, just before our last, uh, our concluding hymn, let me uh, do a couple of announcements. There I am. All right, so a couple of announcements for everybody. Uh, so a reminder, uh, uh, Robert Hayashi will be uh, doing his last service here at St. Andrew's Maple, at least uh, before his uh, expected call to Richmond Hill. Uh, so that will be on September 25th, 2022. So look forward to all of you being here and, uh, and spend, having a wonderful service with Robert and some fellowship time. Again, volunteers are needed. Uh, ushers, hey, if you got a smile, you can be an usher. And, uh, and readers, if you can read, you can be a reader. And uh, thank you for that, Michelle, for reading today. And if you can count, you can be a counter. Uh, and of course, if you're hospitable, as today's uh, sermon was all about, you can be a copy host. Uh, another thing, if you're a little more technical, you can do this job uh, and help me out because uh, we're back to, my son is back to regular competitive swimming. So there's gonna be some Sundays I won't be able to be here. Uh, so uh, I will need some assistance in this seat. So look forward to people to come out and volunteer, talk to any of the elders. And we have a session, session meeting. The elders have a meeting tomorrow night. And so uh, I'd love if you could come and talk to us uh, maybe after church today uh, during fellowship and volunteer for some roles. Thank you very much. And now let me send it back to Reverend Kathy for our concluding hymn. King Charles III was proclaimed yesterday at Rideau Hall in Ottawa, proclaimed King of Canada. We're going to conclude our service by singing the royal anthem, God save our gracious King. It's number 834 in the Blue Book of Praise, substituting the word Queen or King. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. And on behalf of the Session of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Maple, I welcome and thank you for all being here with us here today, both physically and those online and those who may watch the video replay. And again, remind you that there is a time for a fellowship after the service, but for those who cannot be here or though, and for after the fellowship, may we all go and now in peace. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Reverend Brownlee. Thank you, Alan. Thank, Thank you, you everyone time. here and online. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh, no, just your... Oh, you didn't bring it? Okay, so uh, I'm going to just a second. Sorry, everybody. Kevin didn't have his music for this. Go now in peace, be afraid, God will go with you each hour of every day, go now in faith, steadfast, strong and true, no Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed week.